everyone. Today we're going to look at the customizable OneNote charts that we have developed here at JEI Stores Um, These are going to be very similar to what you may have seen in the past from the manufacturers. Um, the big difference is our charts not only take into account the deflection limits of the mullein, but also the stress limits of the mullein. And what that is going to allow us to do is represent a more accurate picture on whether a mullein is going to work or not for your given project. So let's go through a quick example. In this example, we're gonna be using this basic frame, uh, this basic curtain wall frame. So the first thing you're gonna need to know is what is your maximum distance between horizontals in a vertical application? Um, this is gonna be referred to as your maximum unbraced length. And the larger the unbraced length, the less capacity we can get out of the mullion. The larger that unbraced length, the more buckling can occur, um, which reduces the stress capacity of the mullion. So for this example, um, our spacing is of roughly five foot. So you're gonna take that information and, and look at what charts you're looking for for a particular part. And on the third line down, you're gonna see the maximum horizontal mullion center line spacing. And you're gonna to wanna to choose a chart that is exactly your spacing or larger. In this case, we have an S of five foot and we're using a chart with an S of 12 foot. That is perfectly fine to do. Um, however, you may see a reduced capacity and stress, which just means it's gonna be more conservative. Um, I would get closer to maybe a, an S of six or an S of seven um, as these charts become more readily available. So as I stated previously, the larger the unbraced length, the lower the allowable stress. So in this case, since we are looking at an unbraced length of 12, we are going to get more conservative values out of the chart. Um, step two is determine the tributary width of the mullions. And what this is, is what is the center line of the DLO on either side of the mullion we're going to look at? What is that center line to center line distance? In this case, it's 5.3 foot. So we know what chart we're using based on step one. And then we can go to the bottom axis, the horizontal axis, and plot our vertical line for where our tributary width is, that 5.3 foot. The third thing, step three, is we're gonna to need to know what is the height of the mullion. In this case, our height is 10.3 foot. Similar to what we did in step two, now we're gonna go on the vertical axis to the mullion height, and we're gonna plot our, our height, 10.3 foot. Where they intersect, is where we want to look. That's gonna tell, tell us where the allowable pressure for the mullion is. So in this case, we're at roughly 26 PSF. And we know that because of the graphed lines. And you can see at the bottom of our charts what each line represents. These may change on a per project basis as we custom charts are developed, but our standard charts like here will range from a, a wind pressure of 20 PSF to 60 PSF. And linear interpolation between the lines is acceptable, which is why we are allowed to get the 26 PSF out of this. Now make sure if you're using these charts, that the wind pressures you are using are based on allowable wind loads. Many times in structural documents that you get from the GC, the EOR, the wind loads that they provide are based on ultimate wind load pressures. Be aware of that because these are not going to be the same. And if you need help, contact us at JEI to help you determine what your wind load is for your project. So you may have noticed there's another bit of information on these charts. Um, that is the efficiency number. 
and we're going to look at two different MOLANs for the same system. The first chart on the left is the one that we've been going through this whole entire time with using the Conier 16201. It has an efficiency number of 1172. Also for this system, we could have used the 162002. It has an efficiency number of 1169. What's that mean? Well, let's get into it. What this efficiency number is, is the ratio of mullion strength to the mullion weight. So what this basically means is, the larger the number, the more capacity we're getting out of the mullion for a lesser weight. So if both of these mullions work for the wind load pressures on your project, let's say in this case, 20 PSF, both of these worked for 20 PSF, which one should you choose? Well, the one with the higher efficiency number because you're getting more bang for your buck with less material, which probably and should mean a cost savings for your project. Now you can use these to compare two or more, two or more mullions for the same system, or maybe you're doing a comparison to see if you want to go from uh, Conier, Old Castle, Fco, Tubli, YKK, whoever you want to use. You could look at a range of mullions to see which one is going to give you the higher number. And then make your select system selection based on this. We'll talk about more, more about this in future videos, but we just wanted to do a quick overview of the efficiency number here today. There are limitations to the um, window charts that we have developed. The limitations are these are for simple span curtain walls and storefronts. No intermediate wind load or dead load clips. They don't take into account sunshades. Sunshades will take and add additional stress into the mullion. And they don't take into account extended face caps or fins. That will take in and add a weak axis component to the mullions, which will affect the stress. These charts don't take that into account. If any of these conditions apply or you need any other assistance with these charts or help finding the proper system to use or you need any preliminary work, please contact JEI for help at info at JEIstructural.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.